Welcome everybody to the Three Way Podcast Show. This is Los, your host with the most Public Enemy Fifty Nine. Across from me, I got JD, hey, aka <laughs> JD. JD. And behind the magic of it all, we got Eli, aka Jerks. What's up? I have a new uh, background foreground thing. You can't oh. see it, but they can. Okay, cool. <laughs> oh man, that looks amazing! Wow. Right? Oh my goodness. Um, our background. <laughs> so we got a jam-packed show today. Uh, we're gonna fuck it. We're gonna get going. Yeah, fucking, okay. With gaming. Pew, 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 pew. Game over. Game pew. over. Uh, so Capcom has revealed Resident Evil Three gameplay and more details, and it uh, revealed that there is a demo on the way. Yeah. So I saw some of this 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 uh, footage. I didn't want to see too much because I I kind of want to experience the game like like without spoilers. Right, but right. the little that I saw, it looked pretty darn good, man. It looked like it's more Resident Evil Two, which to many of us was uh, our game of the year, or pretty close to it. It really was a game of the year uh, last year. And so uh, it looks like it's more of that Resident Evil Two. What do you guys think? Well, I mean, I think it's great that they're coming out with these, uh, bringing these old games back and redo them in a, in a new format. That way people can, from, you know, my generation can replay them and people of this generation can play them as, as something new and, and so more up to date. So I think it's really good that they're bringing that back and uh, uh, hopefully, they do, hopefully they do it right. You know, hope they do everything set up like they're supposed to do and it looks really good. Uh, again, I haven't seen anything on it because I'm, I'm kind of like you. I want to see what it looks like from the, from the get-go. I want to be first, first impression kind of thing, so... Are you um, a big Resident Evil fan? You know, I only played. I think I played probably the first two of them. I never really did get too what? much in the series. So, but uh, I was oh, more of a. To be honest, that's really the only ones you got to play <laughs> are like one but, uh, and two. I mean, I would say go check out seven because eight is coming out, and seven I think is super good, especially if you uh, can play it in VR. But um, no, one and two I think is is I think you're good. Uh, Jerks, what do you think? Um. Uh, it looks good. It looks real good, actually. Um, I do like that they did add some of the mechanics from Resident Evil 3 into this one. Um, they did get rid of the, 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 the part where, I don't know if anybody's ever played the original Resident Evil 3, but the part where like you get to decide between like actually fighting uh, Nemesis or not. Uh, I think they got rid of that. But this time around also, like one of the things they're boasting is that Nemesis is like... like makes uh what's his name mr, mr. x, x yeah. look like a punk like or, this guy will chase your ass yeah, down yeah, yeah, he yeah, has yeah. more abilities other than just like stalking you uh, yeah i can't i can't wait to try this out yeah uh, man that's gonna be so tense i could just picture myself sweating while nemesis is running after me um but yeah it looks good man i'm excited what is the release date on this do you know this uh, is april wasn't it april i think april's I think right so. Uh, yeah, I think it's April. Resident Evil. Let's see, maybe we. Oh, I'm kind of looking forward to the multiplayer aspect, though. I think. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You create a maze, and your and your, yeah, and your and your friends gotta go through and play it. I think that's gonna be kind of interesting. It's gonna be. Uh, it should appeal to our D and D folks because it's more of a DM style, you know, aspect, and I think that's gonna really really bring in some more uh, players as far as that aspect goes. So I think um, it's really gonna work out real well for that part. We are getting a demo. Uh, when is this demo supposed to come out? The full game will release uh, April 3rd okay. and expect the demo to come out soon. Uh, so it's going to come out prior, some, sometime next month. Yeah, uh, I see a so date on, we're, a date it, on that. sometime in March, uh, we're going to see this demo. I'm kind of back and forth on whether I'm going to play it because, again, I don't kind of want to spoil any of the, the game. But if they do something like, hey, this is the beginning of the game and the save carries over, then you know what? Nah, Why not? Nah, I don't think happens. they're going to do yeah, that. They didn't yeah. do that with Resident Evil 2. You're right. So... Well, uh, unless they do, I don't know. I might not touch the demo if we. If I do touch the demo, it'll be like for streaming purposes. Oh, so. I'm definitely gonna be playing that demo for sure. Actually, I like demos. I think they're great because they really give you an idea of what the game's gonna yeah, be like. To no play doubt. It, you know, but so. I'm sold. I don't need a demo to to sell me. I'm, yeah, I'm done. That's I'm, true. I'm buying yeah, this game. I get you. Uh, Jerks is doing uh, most likely a giveaway on it, so hopefully oh, I win that one. Uh, <laughs> no, well, well, April, I win it. April, April, I win it before you do, probably. April, <laughs> April is pretty is pretty thick with games, isn't it? I don't know. It might not be Resident Evil. To be honest, I'm not sure, but um. Like I said, I have to look at the game's good. But yeah, uh, Xbox Series, uh, Microsoft went ahead and released uh, new features 
Features. Features. I'm looking Features. forward to this one. On their Xbox, uh, uh, you know, more specs. Now, <laughs> I'm not, you know, the most tech. Go, go ahead, Jerks. Resident Evil 3, Final Fantasy 7. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's right. It sounds like a remake Final Fantasy 7. Huh? You, got a, you got another couple of times that you can, uh, you know, really suck the. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Somebody's here. Oh, look at that. Go, go get him. Go get him. <laughs> go get him. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, Xbox has uh, some other features that came out spec wise. So what do you guys think about? Uh, I mean, you guys are more tech oriented than uh, I am. What do you? What do y'all think? Well, they did say that they're going to be adding, like, the suspended state thing. Like, I forget what it's called. Like, the little flashy word they're using for yeah, it. Yeah, some suspended state where you, if you, even if you shut the system off and you turn it back on, yeah. you can go back into the game. It won't completely quit, and you're right back where so you left So, essentially, the sleep mode on a computer is what it is, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, but what they're saying, too, is that even if you're playing multiple games, they'll, they'll have safe states for them, too. Mm-hmm. So, even if, like, you're playing uh, Resident Evil 3. And you were like, you know what? I was playing Resident Evil 2 Remake earlier. And you can go back and forth uh, between them and like not have to wait for loading times for them to start up. Well, that's probably going to be part of this, the solid state drive they're putting in there. I think that's what's going to be really helpful. Right. The, the SSDs are going to help out with that. That's for sure. Um, I'm... I'm not, I'm not just, I'm just like right now, I'm like, okay, that's great. That's where we expected. Like they, they showed off what, I think it was like 12 teraflops or something like that. I don't know. Uh, again, RIP to Stadia because they were boasting 10. Uh, but it seems like with these upgrades, like they, they're really trying to do like be a PC. Well, that is what and, they said. They want to, they want to kind of yeah. bridge that gap between console and PC to get more people to come over to their side, which makes sense, you know? Yeah. But can, it, it, yeah. can I, okay. So. The thing I'm most excited for is something else they announced this week was, uh, or I don't know if it was last week, but the smart transfer where mm-hmm. uh, Xbox basically said any, all of their first party games, if you buy it on the Xbox One X, you'll get it on the Xbox Series X. Right. Like, yeah. done. You don't have to pay for it again. And it seems that third parties are also jumping in that, uh, that train because now you have... Um, uh, Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk. Uh, developer. Uh, zero. Project C- CD. CD what, Project Red. CD Project Red. <laughs> yes. Uh, so they announced that uh, you know, um, uh, Cyberpunk will also uh, u- utilize that feature. So if you buy the game on uh, on current gen, you're gonna get it on next gen uh, uh, Xbox automatically. And I think that's pretty badass. Yeah. That that kind of solidified. Okay, well, I'm buying an Xbox. I mean. I'm buying Cyberpunk on an Xbox One X because I know for sure that whenever I do decide to get an Xbox Series X, who knows when that'll be, a year or two uh, down the road, uh, I know that I'll be able to transfer my file, my game, my, my save, and just kick off from from there. So, uh, right. yeah, I mean, I, I, to me, that's more exciting uh, that they're in, in implementing things of that sort. Right. Well, that and the technology being backwards compatible with the other... Um with their with their uh, remotes remotes as well, you know the, mm. the your controllers gonna be from the Xbox One X. You'll be able to use those on the Xbox Series X as well. That's really mm-hmm. gonna be. I mean, that that's definitely a game changer right there because you know people buying those those high end controllers, you know they don't want to have to rebuy those again. And so if you can play what you had before on a new system, that's gonna really up their game at that point. You know. Yeah, I mean, basically, this is just saying that uh, there won't be like a definitive edition, you know, stuff like that, or. Like PlayStation did with Last of Us Remaster, there won't be a remaster version of it. Uh, some people are getting like confused about it too, and saying like, "Oh, does this mean all, like all my games are gonna be like amazing looking on the Xbox Series X?" Like, yes and no. It's more in, in line of like getting rid of the remaster stuff, uh, uh, which is like basically like incremental uh, like upgrades to like the past gen game. Um, yeah, I, which is I, only I, good for the player. So. Yeah, so I'm I'm okay with it. Like they're not charging for it, so it's fine. Uh, don't expect it to be for every game that's coming from the Xbox or whatever from the past console to At the Series right X. Away. Yeah, it won't. It won't be that. No, uh, no, but no. they also did. Uh, I think Cyberpunk also did mention that it wasn't going to be like right away either. They said something like, if you read their messages, it was something like, "Oh, when like we eventually get to the upgrade part, then it'll come out, and then it'll be free for you to do it." Mm. Well, I think the thing they were trying to alleviate. A lot of people were scared that the re- release was going to be pushed back in, in September, and I think now they're still going to release. That's another game I think is coming out in the end. It's supposed to be coming out in April, if I remember right. 
Uh, yeah, Cyberpunk? Yeah. Yeah, pushed... it, it got delayed. It was supposed to come out in May, I think. Late May. May okay. No, but it's now in September, right? Now it's September. Yeah, yeah. Was it September? Okay, I thought they said they weren't going to do that yet. No, no, they, no, they, no they, it's they September. Are, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, which was supposed to be... Cyberpunk was supposed to be uh, April or May, yeah. Yeah, and, something like that. Yeah, and they pushed it back to the almost the end of the year. Mm. Hey, man, if, you know, in CD Projekt, I trust. If they want to take their time, let it be. Um, I but I thought it was more of a push... I thought, hey, we need more time to get ready for the next gen console. So let's, I don't know, maybe it was a just. But in their statement, they said it was really to, to, uh, refine the game. So, yeah. uh, and yeah. that's definitely a page they think they're taking from Blizzard. That's what Blizzard used to be. You know, they would they would say, okay, we're gonna release on this date, and then it's like, well, we need to, we need more time to to refine yeah. this. And I would rather a game company does that than, I, than I, do I like agree. they did with Assassin's Creed, where they put it out too soon and it just goes, yeah, all over yeah. the place. You know, I agree. so. All right, and uh, other news, uh, the coronavirus <laughs> is affecting all aspects of our world at the moment, including uh, video games. Uh, the Gamers Developers Conference, GDC, which was slated to uh, occur... Uh, March 16th to the 20th. Uh, ...was postponed. Yep. Because many vendors, many companies, many developers... Yeah. PlayStation, uh, were all dropping out one by one by one by one. Yeah, and, um, it was like Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook, uh, Sony, uh, I believe Square Enix again. Uh, there was uh, just uh, oh Unity, the guys uh, who, who have the software who make stuff for games. Yeah, that's a big Unity big, uh, is gone. Company. I mean, there was nothing but like like people dropping out of this convention. Everybody's so afraid of the coronavirus. I mean, we sometimes I make light of it, but at this point, I'm kind of like, maybe we should take it a little bit more serious. Well, I mean, <laughs> you know, conventions are known for being germ germ festivals, you know, and so yeah, it's why, so you it's all, be, I mean, jerks yeah. knows this yeah. most uh, than any yeah. of us. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. I went dude, to pass out. No, the the dude, I came back. Yeah. I came back almost dead. <laughs> yeah, the yeah, conference so. flu is real. So imagine packing the scare of coronavirus on top of that. So you're gonna most likely gonna get sick. Yeah. So now you're coming home and you're having these coronavirus similar symptoms mm -hmm. you know so the paranoia creeps in uh you don't need to go see the doctor pay you know to yeah you know, it's, it's uh i you know it sucks for these people that were attending you know gdc is uh has uh fans going they have these uh panels that uh people really anticipate uh, but unfortunately, yeah, I mean, for the safety of everybody, uh, we're, we were thinking the coronavirus was, you know, the, the effect was going down. But uh, on the contrary, it continues to spread. Um, it's affecting stock markets and things of that of sort. So I think what will really help them out is if they can work with airlines and say, hey, can you guys work to get these guys to, re, you know, push back to when we decide to do it again? Because, you know, a lot of people have already made flights. Yeah. Oh, a lot of people yeah. made hotel arrangements. So if the, if the guys that do the game could develop a conscious can say can work with those people say hey can you guys give these guys a break help yeah. them help them move their, their so when we have to do it, when we do this again see if you can help them move their stuff because a lot of people a lot of those flights are non-refundable and not, you can't change that's them, you know that's a stretch you know? though for a, it is yeah, that, it that is, would be I, a stretch but, but then again most of these people that are going are like business industry people that's so true. it's not well, really like got, coming out of their pocket. you got the goers the guys are, who are fans are just going too you know yeah, and yeah, they're yeah. gonna need you know and if they can at least make the effort I think that's gonna really help them out a lot you know say we try to talk to these guys. We couldn't do it for you. We, we did the best we could. Mm -hmm. You know, that's really going to help them help their stock as far as this. Because I mean, right now, this is going to look bad on them. So, hold on. Are them. you guys looking to travel anytime soon? I'm not. No. I'm not traveling soon. But, I, I mean, I don't know if you guys got your ticket yet. But I am going to Comic Palooza still. Okay. So, if if uh, the nice coronavirus weekend. continues, mm -hmm. are you still going to go? I think I am. Yeah. I mean, the, the best... What if it, like, worsens the situation? Uh, we got our first case in Houston well, or something. Well, then that's when we start looking at the different situations of not going then. But right now, I'm like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, But yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Look, you're, like, kind of, like, laughing about it. That's what I'm saying. Should we take no, no, it more no. serious? I am taking it seriously. <laughs> I, I'm, not, I'm not belittling the coronavirus. I'm sure it's not very hard to get a box of those medical gloves to wear, wear at the conference, you know? If you need to it's just, yeah. about it, you I guess I mean? you never think it's going to hit home until, boom, it's someone down the street, right? right. I don't know. So, um, All right. Uh, uh, sticking with the coronavirus, the Olympics, which are slated to happen later this year, July, uh, in Japan, uh, as of right now, are not 
canceled or not postponed, but they're speculations. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're, <laughs> we're moving to sports. Touchdown. It's a home run. Sports. Sports. <laughs> Space sports. Uh, but, yes, uh, in the sports uh, category, the Olympics are hearing rumors or pressure to maybe uh, decide what are they going to cancel the Olympics. As of right now, officials Hell say no. you know that it's not going to happen. money they make off of that? Hell yeah. Hell That's no. a lot. It's Japan. Mm-hmm. I'm sure they got a crazy show set up. They've been working on this. But, man, this is like a worldwide event, bro. Like, yeah, it is. To be honest, like, okay, canceling GDC, whatever. This is like national at best right um this is international this is everywhere this is this the world is olympics worldwide yeah. this is everyone from all different countries coming to one place to i don't know man i wouldn't i wouldn't do it i don't see during this epidemic you should be doing everything you can to stifle it yeah and bringing everyone in one place from all over the world. It's like you're asking for it. It's like, hey, you know what? Let's, we want to, it's like you're doing the a complete opposite of what you should be doing. What do you guys think? Well, like I was telling you guys earlier, I think it's going to be just like the bird flu. I think it's going to, it's going to be something we're going to get fixed real quickly. You know, it's because it, it's definitely has become an epidemic over in Asia. You know, it's, it's been pretty bad over there. And I think once, you know, again, once we start having cases here in the U.S., it's going to be, they're going to kick into gear to try to find a, solution for it because you know pharmaceutical companies got to make their money somehow yeah you know if they can if they can find a solution for that and then sell it elsewhere they're gonna you know they're gonna do it so i'm pretty sure they're already working on it right now and i think hopefully we'll have it fixed by then um again you know if they have to move if they have to push it back though it's really gonna hurt their economy over there because like i said that that's you know each country they set up billions to create this kind of thing yeah absolutely on, i mean you know, they, and, they they build like buildings I mean, yeah they, they build like new housing and everything yeah. for these things to come through and then yeah, it's too expensive it, for them yeah. to stop it. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, all right. I mean, hey, uh, let's hope it's a it's a small thing, right? <laughs> right? But there was no Olympics during the bird flu. Now it's like, <laughs> hey, right? You know, hey, everybody, stay in your country. No, let's have the Olympics. Everybody come and hang out together. Bring the um, Germex. Yeah, bring it all here to Japan. Um, this would make for a great anime. I'm not making a. Uh, I'm just saying it would, it would be a pretty pretty interesting anime. Um, all right. Uh, also in sports, so we got a little drama in the NBA. Oh. And I like it. Oh. Right. A little, a little rivalry brewing. Oh. Uh, so as you, many of you can remember, during the uh, All Star Game draft, that Harden. I mean, I'm sorry, LeBron James and Giannis Antetokounmpo. Uh, I hope I said that right. Uh, sure. We're having uh, Giannis was drafting, and he decided when asked about Harden, he said, "No, I want to get somebody who can pass the ball." Oh. He ended up taking another guard. I forget. The, it's not John Wall. It's someone else. But um. Okay. Uh, he ended up getting another guard, who uh, ironically has less assists than Harden. Um. And, uh, yeah, so he kind of took a jab at Harden. Harden hasn't said anything about it. It's been a couple of weeks. Finally, Harden, in an interview with uh, uh, one of the best sports reporters out there. I forget her name. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, yeah, in that interview, he when asked about that, about Giannis, he says, uh, I don't know where that's coming from because none of these guys can hang with me. When speaking, <laughs> when speaking directly about Giannis, uh, he says that, yeah, I wish I was seven feet tall, too, because I could dunk, and that takes no skill, right? Oh. What I do takes skill. Um, so, you know, just coming at Giannis, basically, saying that, you, bro, bro, you don't have any skill, man. Uh, you know, what I do is skill-based. What you do is just running and dunking, and that's it. Yeah. Uh, then Giannis next day also does an interview and just tries to take the high road then and says, oh, no, you know, I'm just playing the game. I just want to go out there and play and play hard, and that's what I'm focused on. Just didn't really take another another jab at Harden. Oh, uh, he drafted Kimba Walker. Kimba Walker, yes, yeah. who is ranked 20-something in assists when Harden, I believe, is top 10 in assists. Sure. But whatever. Uh, uh, so, um, yeah, I mean, Harden and Giannis, little, little, uh, drama there. What do you, what do you think, man? 
Uh, Giannis, uh, man, I don't know. I really don't watch the sports, but yeah, most of the highlights are just him running into the hole. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they all have their faults. Harden can't play defense. I mean, what do you want me to do about that, too? You know, that's true. So yeah, I kind of, I kind of see like, like where, uh, Giannis is coming from too, because it's like. Yeah, yeah, Harden's like a good scorer, but I need somebody else who can help out as a team. I mean, there's a reason you didn't haven't gone too far in the playoffs, you know. And like he's over here, basically carrying them to like almost to a finals and whatever. So I don't know. Um, I, I think that uh, it's good for Harden to stand up for himself. He never asked for this. He never came at no one. He didn't start it. He just finished it. Um, <laughs> but it's funny because yesterday at Giannis' game, after all of this, Giannis came in. Yeah. And he uh, there was a move he did during the game where he was like trying to dribble at the th- three point line, yeah. and he did like a step back and he shot. Yeah. He was trying to like pr- I guess prove Harden wrong in that instance. Yeah. Uh, but it was just a big air ball. Uh, <laughs> So he, he was trying to show the skill set, and it just didn't work out. Uh, but, you know, things like this could turn people around. So, like, when someone gets criticized, right, Yeah. it can it can affect how you train, what your, your work ethic. Yeah, I he, see Giannis. It could be used as motivation. To, yeah, exactly. Using this as motivation to get that skill set better. And, uh, yeah, I mean, don't – maybe waking up a sleeping giant somewhere in there uh, – so I'm not, a, you know, but Harden had to do something. You know, he's not going to just take shit, right? No, yeah, of course. Uh, in the NFL, the Players Association is still not uh, agreeing on a collective bargaining agreement. Uh, so, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the risk or the chances of a strike still looms. But, you know, right now we're still early on. There's still a lot of offseason to go. This is uh, for the 2021 season specifically. Okay. Uh, so, you know, you, we st- there's still a lot of time to go, but uh, it seems that the players want some more rights when it comes to, uh, to what they agree with, what contract they sign with the NFL. What do you guys uh, think on that? JD? Well, I'm good with, you know, if, if, if it's focusing more on playing conditions and that kind of thing, I'm, I'm good with it. You know, I'll go ahead and, you know, Definitely renegotiate. Definitely make sure you get some some better, yeah. you know, conditions, more safety, you know, better better equipment, that kind of thing. I'm good with that. If they're worried more about pay, as far as this goes, I'm not okay with that because I think these guys get paid paid plenty as it is. Mm-hmm. You know, we got people. These guys are getting paid paid more in a year than some people get paid their whole lifetime. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's just and then and they're upset because they're not getting paid more. Okay, yeah, you only have a certain period of time you can play. So what? Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of people work jobs like that, like we were discussing earlier about the military. You know, these guys in the military, they only have 20 years, 30 years to do this, and then they're done, you know. And they're in, in, in their entire career, even with the retirement pay, they're still not making what these guys are making in a single year. So it's well, like... One thing is that uh, unlike some other sports, most sports uh, in the U.S., well, the NFL specifically, has a salary cap. So you're capped on how much you could pay your players per year. Uh, what the players are asking, or what most likely is going to happen, even the league is kind of okay with this, uh, this isn't one, really one of the disputed parts, is raising that cap. Now, what does that do? That not only... Uh, it, so, a couple of two ways it could go. It means that the lower paid, the guys that are sitting on the benches, kind of like you know getting the lowest of the pay, maybe they can see an increase in their pay because the salary cap is higher. The other route it could go is instead of these superstars getting paid a hundred million per year. Now they're getting paid 120, 150, right? right. Mm-hmm. So their uh, uh, salary could go up. So it could go either way. It could it could be a good thing for the players that really don't get a chance to play, but are, are dedicating their life to the team and them get paid more, or it can go more towards the, the, uh, the superstar. So that's the the thing right there is where they're kind of like uh, you know, but everybody kind of agrees on the salary cap going higher. And some in some other leagues, you know, you don't even have a salary cap. It's the yeah. best. The team with the most money pays their players whatever they want. And they get all the best players, yeah, and like there's no baseball. competition. Uh, yeah, like baseball, which you do get penalized if you go over, but uh, you, you're not necessarily capped. Uh, but the NFL, yeah, you can't go over that. So. Uh, yeah, it could kind of work both ways, basically. Well, I mean, like, we're, like I was telling you earlier, but I mean, I, I think the salary, the salary cap is good, I think, but it needs to be differently. Like I said, it needs to be per game. You know, mm. 
Like if you're on first string, you get paid so much. If you're on second string, you know, have a tiered pay. And if you suit up and are on the field, all right, you're getting paid for that game. You know, uh, no matter if you play or not, just like they should like to do now. You know, and if you get injured, you got certain provisions for getting injured. You know, if you get injured during a game, okay, you're still gonna maybe maybe you might might lose a tier or two, but you're still gonna get paid while you're injured. Well, my you know? thing, uh, my argument against that is that there's. There's a, a lot of injuries that occur in football, specifically football. It's a very violent game. Oh, yeah. So I think the players deserve, when they sign these contracts, I think they deserve a certain amount of guaranteed money, right? Maybe not the whole contract. Hey, if the if the team's willing to do that for this player, that's on them. But, but uh, yeah, I think these players, and they negotiate this. This isn't like a given. Teams willingly give these guys guaranteed money to, to have them. So... I think if a team is willing to give these guys guaranteed money, even though they get injured, that that I think that's up to them and their the player's agent and the player, right? Because, um, like I said, I mean, uh, a lot of these players are not asking for guaranteed money because it's not, you know, their careers can be short-lived. Uh, look at uh, Andrew Luck. He retired way before his contract was re- uh, done because his body was just kind of destroyed after all the years. Yeah. I mean, lacerated lungs, uh you know, broken bones, conc- like, come on, these guys yeah. give their body and also, and do I think he deserved the guaranteed money that he, yeah, I mean, the guy gave blood, sweat, and tears for that squad, maybe some brain issues, who knows, down the road, so, uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, uh, but they're in the midst of that negotiating, uh, this season's gonna happen, it's the next season that is still up in the air, uh, yeah. but I think they'll get it done, there's too much money on the table, like, like you've pointed out, there's too much money on the table for it to for these guys not to to sign off on a contract, uh, but yeah. Uh, so next thing we're gonna move on to is pop culture. Pop, pop. pop? <laughs> <laughs> ah, you'll get it. <laughs> uh, Disney has uh, their 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 CEO has stepped down, and Bob Iger and uh, Bob. So whatever is now the new CEO. Oh, Bob so Chapek or Chapek, I'm sorry. Chapek, Chapek, Bob C H A P E S P E K, isn't it? Okay. Uh, so another Bob is now Chapek. CEO of Bob the company. Uh, did Chapek. they release any statement on this or any any? Um, see, according to this Polygon article, it says, "quote Bob Iger has built Disney into the most admired." admired and successful media and entertainment company and i have been lucky to enjoy a front row seat as a member of his leadership team said chapik uh quote i share his commitment to creative excellence technology innovation and international expansion and i will continue to embrace the same strategic pillars going forward everything we have achieved thus far serves as a solid foundation for further creative storytelling bold innovations and thoughtful risk taking and quote so basically you know he got caught up something probably another massage parlor incident just like i uh, wasn't you serious no, you I think that's know. what happened <laughs> no i no, have this, no this idea was, this was planned back in april of last year so yeah like, this is yeah this new. is like from a while ago and he's still going to be in an, in an advising factor until 2021 so it's okay. not like he's just Got, All of got a sudden laid on fire. So yeah. this has been planned. Yeah. They've been uh, grooming this other Bob right. guy right. for the position. This other Bob guy, Bob too. <laughs> Which I mean, he's got like Bob like I said, two. you know, he's laid a good foundation for him. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, this guy been much the for a while. Yeah, movies exactly. are making you know. money. Marvel uh, universe, he Star bought, Wars universe. He bought Disney. Well, Disney bought Star Wars. They bought Fox. What else did they buy? They bought uh, Marvel. Marvel. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. The yeah, so, guys. Set up the company for nothing but success. Now it's just Bob uh, Jr., Bob Second, to uh, Bob continue two. that path. Do you think this is uh, causes turmoil, or this no, is just of course not. The Disney's no. going to continue to make um, bank. I mean, please. Yeah, Chapik's been working on her Iger for a while now, so it's, I think it's going to be he's going to be able to continue on that that phrase. But we'll have to wait and see what he decides to do because, again, when somebody else takes over, there's no guarantee he's going to continue on with the guy for yeah. the first guy started. Yeah, of course. So, I mean, we got to wait and see what he's going to do. But I think. If- Rated R movies coming. Yeah, Deadpool. <laughs> yeah. Oh, or Deadpool, yeah. you know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, hey, Iger, and Iger, we trust, man. Come back. Um, <laughs> in other news, uh, Disney related, uh, Star Wars has announced a new line, a new saga of, of Star Wars called Jedi High Republic. The High Republic. Now, this is going to be focused on many uh, mediums. 
Right. Primarily on books and comics, but and also... Books and comics, but I think they're also looking into, into live action as well. And, and uh, so it's, uh, it's, explain to me about this, because I, I don't know I don't know anything about the High Republic. It basically looks like what they should have done with, this, with the uh, final three series, which is basically yet let... The fans and creators come up with it with an idea of what they want the what? song, the song that to look fans like. fans create this? It's kind of like that. I mean, they're, they're taking creators from all different kinds of areas. Uh-huh. And like who are fans. Yeah, basically who yeah, are fans, yeah. you know, and they're letting them come up with stories for this High Republic area because, really, to be honest, the only thing we have back from that time is Knights of the Old Republic. Oh. You know, those two things. And I'm, and I'm really kind of hoping it's going to oh. be kind of like that because that would be awesome. Knights of the Old Republic. That would be awesome to see that as a live oh. action. It really would, you know, so... Just do a night, Knights of the Old Republic Disney mm-hmm. special. <laughs> that, that could be that could be what's coming down the pipeline too. We don't know because I think it's supposed to be in that time frame, that, in that era. And then remaster Knights of the Old Republic yeah, exactly. and release the show. And number two, well, I hope they do number two as well because I never did finish that one, but it looked like it was pretty good from the. Uh, uh, number two was uh, PC only, right? Or am I? No, 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 was no that was a uh, Knights of the Old Republic MMO that came out on. Uh, okay, yeah, the, the yeah that one. So, but yeah, I think because it would be interesting to kind of see more about the Sith in that era. Oh. You know, that would be interesting to see those guys play, see what they can do with those, and oh. as, as well as the Jedi, you know, oh. we, you know, we got both sides of that, I mean, that's basically, that's the, that's the era where both those two factions were and high keep Brian Johnson as far away from it as you can. <laughs> Probably, Correct? yeah. yeah. Um, so, but... I like this, man. I like that they're, okay, let's go back to the olden times, let's create new stuff, never before seen stuff, let's delve into those, uh... Those things, and let's tackle it from all kinds of aspects, and uh, you know, TV, live action, uh, you know, all of it. So, what do you think, Jerks? Uh, can't wait. I know they're working on a new type of villain, villain race. You know, kind of a like a like a collector scavenger kind of guys, where they you know they decide to they come to take things, and I guess their philosophy is that you can't take it with you, so you, we're gonna take it for you. you wow. Know? <laughs> But they can also bring in Mandalorians. I mean, Mandalorians would be in high in power at that time, too, yeah. or becoming into power. And there was a whole war between yeah. the Mandalorians and the, and the Jedi. Jedi and the Jedi, the Jedi as well. They've been yeah. at war with I mean, that's where the Dark Saber came from, was a Jedi Mandalorian who went back to, to unite his people. So they can really tell that story as well. <laughs> I think, I think it'd be, there's a whole lot of stuff they can do with this to really make it interesting, you know? Okay. Yeah. I'm excited. Hey, they're taking it serious. They're taking their time. You're not just putting crap out there. Yep. And when you right, have fans Johnson. creating stuff like this, it's going to be a lot better than it is just somebody coming in and saying, oh, look at John let me see what I can do. Yeah, right, you know? Uh, People look actually at, uh, enjoy what they're doing rather than, oh, well, I just got to make this J.J. Abrams video. saving Star Wars. Um, he tried. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm excited for it. Uh, the last bit of news when it comes to pop culture, uh, we if you forgot, because I did, <laughs> um, Monster Hunter... Capcom Monster Hunter has a movie coming out with Mila Jovanovic. 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 Mia Jovanovic. Jovanovic. Uh, and uh, another guy uh, doing uh, the uh, 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 co-star thing. And uh, the co-star thing. <laughs> Tony Ja. Tony Ja. Uh, but yeah, so we, you know, we haven't seen anything since we saw a little bit of footage way back. It was like a tra- not even a trailer, but like I don't know. A long time ago. A teaser, I guess you could say. Yeah, it was months ago. Uh, but now we see posters that were released for the Monster Hunter movie. One with Tony Ja and one with Mila jo- Jovanovic. Jo- not- Jovanovic. 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 <laughs> of Resident Evil fame. Uh, you know, the great Resident Evil movies. Yeah, um, amazing classics. Uh, classics. Uh, well, I mean, I think she, her big start was, uh, uh, what was it, uh, with Bruce Willis? Element. Yeah, for the only, uh, that was her. That was her big start. Of course, yeah. Multipass. Yes. Multipass. Yeah, that movie. Was, <laughs> that's a classic. But uh, unfortunately, big she was uh, then just doing Resident <laughs> Evil movies forever. Yeah. Um, but anyways, yeah. I mean, so the posters are out. How close are we to seeing this movie in theaters? Uh, Monster Hunter. September fourth. September fourth. Okay. September fourth. Now, I'm not. I'm not real familiar. I didn't really follow this much. This. This is an anime, but it was. It's being made into a live. It's action, a video right? game. So, oh, okay. yeah, okay. Okay. Monster Hunter is a very popular video game. Uh, it's about honey monsters uh, crafting stuff okay. from those monsters. So there's a great loop in there. Uh, the latest one, Monster Hunter World, came out for all these current-gen systems. It's You can play online. They've been releasing DLC. So essentially it's another video game movie. Yes. It's a video game movie. You don't movie. expect a whole lot. 
Correct. <laughs> Especially with Mila, Mila, Mila Jovanovic. Uh, yeah. On there, uh, yeah, my expectations aren't great. Multitask. Am I excited to see what they do with Moscow? It's it's really one of the. It's super popular in in Asia in uh, in Japan. It's one of the most yeah. popular games there. Uh, it's getting up in popularity in the north in the, you know North Americas, but. Uh, maybe this this movie will push it over. Who knows? Okay, but we'll um, he's gonna do trash. Let's just say it. I don't know, man. <laughs> it depends. It's gonna depend on who writes it. To be honest, that's to what we're gonna look at. You know, from what I heard from the summary, someone who's like a military. So Mila is a military, uh, serving in the military. Uh-huh. Somehow goes into a portal to get stuck oh, into the no. Monster Hunter universe. Not he man's the Masters of Universe again. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Uh, right there, it's kind of looking like, uh, yeah. I don't know. So Can't she goes wait. into Monster Hunter universe and somehow has to hunt monsters. 10 yeah. out of 10. That seems to be the thing. They're do- didn't, didn't they do that with Sonic as well? What do you mean? Where he came through a portal to our yeah, world? Yeah, of course. That's the easiest way to do it. Just create the world. Let them play in the world and just it's already created. Just go with it, you know? Put them in the portal. Stop Agreed. trying to bring them into our world. Let them play in theirs. You know? <laughs> Put them in the portal. Yeah. So it's, it's what we do every time we pick up a game controller. We, I mean, if you we gonna, step through a portal into the The only game universe, that needs to be doing that know? is the game Sometimes Portal. Naked. You know? <laughs> portal is about portals. Leave it there. You know? <laughs> Agreed. Um, all right. That's the end of the show, but it's not over yet. Uh, at the end of uh, ever so often, at the end of these shows, I like to do a final punch, which is a final word, uh-huh. uh, something on our minds that triggers us, that pisses us off, or we're excited for. Nice. All right. So my final punch. I'll start. Of course. Animal Crossing is literally three weeks away. Right. I am so pumped. Okay. I am literally gonna dedicate my life to building this island. Please, guys, if you're going to play Animal Crossing, let me know. Come to my island. I'll come to yours. I need other fruits. That is my final punch. You guys got anything? You should keep calling people to play Animal Crossing or fruit? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Normally, we have we reserve that word for another, another class of, of human beings, but we'll leave it there. Yes, right now. fruits are important in Animal Crossing. Jerks, you got any final punch? Uh, no. We tried to play D and D last night. It was uh, don't play D and D, I guess. Or just get somebody <laughs> who knows what they're doing to play it for you. To help yeah, that's it. You need a good uh, grandmaster. What's the game master? Game master. Yeah. Yes, you need a good game master to Grand control just, the uh, tempo of the game. If you guys want, I'll, I'll pick up the books and we can run a run a game. I said I'll, I'll get you more introduced into it. I think. I thought I've been Boom. playing D and D for a while. So. Boom. We did like a faux one, like a homebrew one, and I was already exhausted by the time we finished. I was like, Ugh, I can't imagine a real one. Cause then you have to like have a sheet to fill out your character and shit. I was like, oh. yeah, there's there's stuff you can get online to do that too. But like, we'll discuss that. Nah, we'll discuss I'm it good. off the camera. Good, JD, dude. any final punches? No, you know I pretty much said everything I gotta say for this one. So uh, nothing's mad. You're not mad. You're not triggered. You're not excited. <laughs> <laughs> we already discussed about what I was triggered about with the, uh, the NFL contract. All so, right, you know. screw NFL players. That's straight from JD. No, so that's, that's cruel, a quote. You know. That's a quote from JD, right from the source. All right. Nice. Well done. Uh, thank you guys for watching this episode. Please remember, like, subscribe, comment, rate us five stars. Do whatever you have to do. Share. Tell your family. Tell your friends. Tell your spouse, tell your mistress, whoever you have to tell to watch this show, let them know, please. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, Peace. Bye. Boom.